Hello. Thank you for uh, coming back to my Bible study here. Uh, at Austin Grove, we're uh, in the book of uh, Romans, uh, going through that to the very end. Right now in my class, we're in uh, chapter 8 of that book, uh, and we're going to be in verses 9 and 10 today. Uh, and I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't really go any further than that. I just could there's this, uh, there's one part of these, uh, these verses I just couldn't, I couldn't, uh, move on from, I couldn't, couldn't get it out of my head. I couldn't stop thinking about it. It basically informed the, uh, the entire lesson for me, uh, today. It doesn't happen very often, but you know, I, I do apologize for that because, uh, that is going to be where, where I focus my lesson today. Uh, Actually, on just pretty much one word, uh, but uh, hopefully uh, somebody out there, uh, somebody online is, is needing uh, what I've got to say, what I feel it's uh, what the Lord put on my heart when I was when I was preparing this lesson uh, today. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to read uh, verses nine and ten, uh, and again that's in chapter eight of Romans, verses nine and ten, and then we will come back and we'll go through verse nine. <laughs> Starting in verse 9, it says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And like I said, that's only, uh, it's only two verses. Only two verses. Uh, but there's a there's a, a a part of verse nine that I just couldn't get away from. Uh, now we come back to verse nine. It says, "But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you." Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Uh, when a person is born again, uh, they're no longer in the flesh. Uh, but they are in the spirit. Okay, uh, you. I guess it's hard. It's a little hard to explain because you, I mean you're still alive. You know, I mean you're obviously still still in the, you still have a body. So you do still have a, a fleshly body, but that's not really what you're focused on. It's almost as if you live in a different sphere. Uh, you know, I mean the same way a fish lives in water. I mean that's there. That's where a fish lives. A fish can't live outside of water. Uh, and me as a person. Uh, I live in the air and I can't live underwater. Uh, I mean, I, I need a air around me to be able to breathe the same way a fish needs water around him to breathe. Uh, in the same way, I mean, you're, you're going to live in the spirit while, uh, the unsaved man is going to live in the flesh. You're going to live in a different spirit than they do. Uh, so the saved person is going to live in the spirit. You not only live in the spirit, but the spirit lives in you. And that's, uh, that's something I found, I found very, very, uh, I just couldn't get away from that thought this week. Uh, Paul made sure that, that he's very, very clear with the end of this verse. Uh, if you are not indwelt by the spirit of Christ, then you don't belong to Christ. What he says, he says, now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. If you do not have the spirit of Christ living within you, you do not belong to Christ. Uh, he's very clear. There's no way to misunderstand that here. Uh, you cannot be a Christian without being indwelt by the spirit. Okay. When there is no evidence of his presence by the fruit he produces, and that's Galatians uh, 5, 22, 23, then that person has no legitimate claim on Christ as their Savior and Lord. Now, there's some debate of, over whether uh, the Spirit of Christ here is the same as the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I, I think a safe bet is yes. Uh, uh, most of the, the study material that I found uh, thought, thought that as well. Uh, and the assumption that they are the same here seems to fit best with the context of, of the, the passage here. Uh, and now next, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'm, I'm going to pick up the word that really just uh, 
consumed me this week during this this lesson and and the word is a not really impressive word uh it, it's dwells uh and uh the greek word for dwells uh here refers to being in one's own home that's no big surprise i dwell in my home uh the word means exactly what you think it would mean uh it's not something that meant something different back in the day uh that means now it means the same thing uh but i just couldn't i couldn't get away from that this week i couldn't get away from that thought uh that his home is within me uh the spirit of god is going to make his home in every believer who trusts in and put their faith in Christ. You can find that in First Corinth First Corinthians six, uh, chapter six, verses nineteen and twenty. You can also find that in Romans chapter twelve, verse thirteen. And what really consumed me this week is uh, is a question: If the Spirit makes His home within me, the Spirit makes His home within you. The question that I couldn't get away from is what kind of host are you? What kind of host am I? Do you welcome the spirit into your life uh, and tell him to make himself at home? That mi casa su casa, my house is your house? Or do you point to a corner for him to sit in and tell him not to touch anything. You know what I mean? You, we all know that kid, you know, that you just can't take your eyes off of. You know what I mean? If you leave him alone for, if you turn around, they're going to be into something. Uh, you know, that kind of kid where you say, hey, sit right here, I'll be back in just a second. And you take two steps and turn around and look back just to make sure they're still sitting there. Is that how you treat the spirit? within you. Uh, and I couldn't help but think of, uh, about the way I was raised uh, and uh, my mother. Uh, it, it reminded me of how my mother would always, uh, she would always welcome uh, relatives uh, and such and anybody that was going to stay with us for, for any period of time. Uh, she welcomed them into our home uh, and basically what she would do is she, was, she would insist that they stay in her room. Uh, had a big bed, the room had a bathroom connected to it. Uh, so she would insist that they stay in her room. Uh, and I never understood this. I mean, as a kid coming up, I never understood this. You know, I'm like, man, I'm just glad nobody's asking me to give up my bed. I ain't giving, and they ain't sleeping with me. Uh, I ain't giving up my room. That's basically how I felt about it. Uh, and it was only as an adult, uh, I mean, you know, even now, you know, I mean, I, you know, somebody, I'll give somebody a place to stay. You know, I mean, if you need, you need a place to stay, I mean, you know, I've got plenty of places for you to stay. We've got extra beds in the house, but I don't know if I'm giving you my bed. Uh, I mean, in my house, my bed is the best. My bed is the best. I mean, we, uh, me and my wife actually, actually built our house so we basically designed it the way we wanted it i mean my room my closet my bathroom everything right there is exactly how we want it i mean that's for us uh so even now you know i mean i mean i i've got an extra bed you can sleep in you want to come i mean i got a couch too uh but as far as you know am, am i gonna give you my bed and my room so that you could so that i could go sleep on the couch i don't think so and it took me uh, the longest time, I mean, that the you know, to understand that the person my mother is. And my mother, I mean, when she said to make yourself at home, she truly meant it. She truly meant that she wanted them to make themselves at home. She truly, uh, she was offering her guest the best she had.
whether it was an aunt or uncle or a friend from, from out of town, she was offering her uncle or her, uh, she was offering her friend the best that she had to offer. When she told them to make themselves at home, she truly meant it. She really wanted them to be as comfortable in her home as they would be in their own. Uh, and I couldn't, I couldn't help thinking about that aspect of my mother and my childhood as I was coming up, uh, because it, it's got me thinking of how comfortable, uh, how comfortable do I think the spirit is in the home that he has within me? And this is something that you should ask yourself too. All believers should ask this question. How comfortable do you think the spirit is in the home that he has made within you? And that might not even be the best question. The best question might be, how comfortable do you allow him to be? How comfortable do you allow him to be? Have you given him permission to change your life? Uh, to fulfill the purposes that he actually made you for? That God specifically designed you for? That's, uh, you can find that in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Let, we can even read that real quick. Uh, Ephesians chapter two, verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. He made you for a reason. But he might have to make some tweaks along the way. He might have to prepare you to carry out those good works that he prepared beforehand. Are you okay with those changes? Or do you fight him tooth and nail? Uh, have you told him it's all right for him to, to make those changes? You're, you're ready and willing. Or are you the person that's the, you know, invited the Holy Spirit into your life and basically pointed to a corner of your life? You know, and this Sunday morning, this is what you got. You, Sunday morning, you stay there. Don't, I mean, Monday, Tuesday, those are mine. You know, we're, I give you a little bit of time on Wednesday night, but you know, after that, you know, you sit back down. Don't touch nothing. Uh, don't touch none of this stuff. I like my life just how it is right now. Everything's great. Don't don't go messing things up. Uh, tell him not to mess with anything because you're happy exactly how you are. Uh, or maybe you're afraid of how messy. Uh, your life might get during the remodel that he needs to do to have a comfortable home within you. And this is definitely some, something that you need to spend some time thinking about. It's definitely something that I've, I've thought about uh, a lot this week since I, since I prepared this lesson. Uh, and this, this lesson is probably going to step on your toes. I hope it does. It stepped on mine. It's still stepping on my toes, honestly. Uh, but I can, I mean, I, I gotta be honest with you. I mean, if you can read the Bible and the Bible doesn't offend you, then you ain't reading it right. You, you don't understand what you're reading. Uh, if, I mean, if nothing in, in the word of God offends you, then I don't think you've understood what you read. Uh, but just know that before before I bring anything to you uh, from my studies, this is all I'm already applying this to me. I'm already applying this to me. If it steps on your toes, knows that it's already stepped on my toes. It stepped on my toes before it ever gets to you. Uh, we move on to verse ten, uh, and verse ten says, "And if Christ is in you." The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And this, this is what I couldn't get away from. 
I couldn't get away from it. Going to verse 10, I mean, the first thing, you know, the first part of the verse, and if Christ is in you, and that's, that's amazing to me. I mean, you think about that. Through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, Christ is actually in the believer. He's within you. And that's a, that's a super big thought. You know I mean? That's, that's a really big thought. Uh, I mean, to consider that the Lord of, of life and the Lord of glory is actually dwelling in the body of believers. Uh, it's, it's almost too much to fathom. It's even more amazing when you consider that your body is still subject to death because of sin. Uh, and uh, the New King James uh, has actually has the word spirit here capitalized, which usually means that we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Um uh, but most of the study material that I found uh, and, and the research that I did suggested that that's not what Paul was actually trying to say here. Uh, and that, that most of the, the more recent translations and the better translations of the, uh, the Bible translate that word uh, as, as spirit with the lowercase s, which means the person spirit uh, and not the Holy Spirit. So basically what that would mean is what Paul is telling us is that God's spirit indwells you in verse 9. If God's spirit indwells you, the human spirit is alive, even though it is still trapped in the body of death. Uh, the human spirit has been made alive through the righteous work of Christ in his death and resurrection on the cross. And because his righteousness has been credited to our accounts, uh, and I still couldn't, uh, I still couldn't get past the fact that, you know what I mean? That, that one word dwells, that one word dwells. The spirit dwells in us, verse nine. Christ dwells in us, uh, in, in verse 10. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I mean, but we still sin. We still sin. And one might say, but Jesus is like, uh, Jesus and sin are like oil and water. They don't mix. That's true. That's true. They don't. Uh, and an unbeliever that I talk to on a regular basis uh, about Christ uh, thinks that if uh, everything that I say about Jesus is true, then uh, I should be a perfect example of a follower of Christ. And I've got to admit that that hurts uh, because I'm not. And he knows I'm not. He knows I'm not. I work with this person. Uh, he, knows, he knows I'm not. I have a, uh, I have an, an atheist watching me a lot. So when I fail, it's very, it's humbling because I know that he just saw it. But when I sin in front of him, you know, I know that he just saw it and he knows what I said. He knows what, what, you know, that I claim Christ. Uh, but I did hear it put a, a good way uh, in a Bible study this week uh, of whether or not a person is, is, whether or not a Christian can, can stop sinning. Uh, and basically he said that uh, it's uh, possible not to sin anymore, but it isn't probable. And, you know, that, that, that made a lot of sense to me because, you know, it's possible because I have the power of Christ within me, okay? Uh, verse 9 has said that. I have the power of Christ within me. And is there anything too hard for Christ? Who is Christ? Well, he's God. Okay. Is anything too hard for God? No. So, with the power of Christ within me, it is possible for me not to sin ever again. It's just not probable. 
it's probable uh the problem with that and the problem with that probability i mean uh because a probability like that i mean you, you know it's not even playing the you know mega million millions jackpot or whatever you know where it's one in a trillion odds or something like that i don't know uh, i mean i don't think they have a number for it'd be one in i mean a trillion uh and be, i mean for you just keep on going the odds of somebody actually you know being saved and not sinning again i mean the odds are astronomical uh, i mean you had to get squares and all this other stuff i mean to to get that number I mean, I don't know if you could write that number on a single piece of paper. Uh, that's how improbable it is. And it's improbable uh, because I'm still trapped in a body uh, with a sinful nature. And there are going to be times, and, and it's very important to show you, it's not, that, not when I can't help from sinning because I can always help it. I can always help it. I can always choose not to. I can always bite back that that thing that you know I don't I don't want I shouldn't say. I can always bite it down. Uh, you know I can always choose to to have better thoughts because uh, I mean those are the ones that I, that I really struggle with. You know I mean I look all nice on the outside, but you've said something that offends me, and I'm smiling to your face, but I'm saying some nasty things about you in my head. Uh, that's that's what I really struggle with. You know, is, is the, the thought life. Uh, and there's going to be times like not, not when I can't help from sinning. I can always help from sinning. But times when I don't use the power that I have within me. Times when I don't, I don't seek him first. Uh, times when I don't seek his will at all uh, for my life. But I seek my own will instead. I want, I want what I want right now. I'll get, I'll get back to this here in a minute. I want what I want right now. Uh, and I imagine that, that, you know, I mean, we've been talking about how Christ lives within you. He's made a home within you. Uh, and I imagine that when, when I do that and when I sin, uh, I imagine it's like, you know, I walked into the room where Christ is at within me. You know, I mean, you can picture anything, picture your, the most comfortable room in your house, your living room, wherever it is that, that you all congregate and you sit down and you have a good time and, and you're most likely to see other people. I imagine that, that I, it's like I walked into that room within me where Jesus is living and I, I, I walk up to him and slap him in the face. Because you gotta, you gotta admit that that's, I mean, that really is what sin, that is. That's, that's what sin is in the life of a believer to God. It's a slap in the face. It's a slap in the face. Uh, when I find myself sinning, I, I thinking, about, thinking about these verses and thinking about that, that Christ lives within me, I, I imagine the look of discomfort on his face when, uh, I do that I've made, I, because I've just made his home very, very uncomfortable. Uh, for instance, uh, this week I actually uh, stabbed myself in the hand with a uh, a chainsaw file. Uh, any of you have ever used a chainsaw file, you know they come in this little kit with a little red handle and there's this really pointy end. It's about four inches long, three inches long maybe, uh, that fits inside a red handle. Uh, and I, I was using that piece of equipment for something it wasn't intended for. Uh, I was using it to get the, uh, the little hook out of a, uh, socket. Their socket wrenches come with these little plastic hooks in them. I was trying to get it out. I couldn't. Uh, so I was holding the socket like this and I was using that file like this. To, and I put about an inch and a half of the file into my hand, into my palm. Uh, and I, I'm ashamed to admit that when I did that, uh, some words came flying out of my mouth that there were, there were words that I shouldn't know. There were words I should have forgotten. Uh, 
And that was that was my default. Those were the first of the words that came to my mind. Not Al. Uh, that was the first thing. That was that was my default. And I imagine the look on my Savior's face when those words came flying out of my mouth. Uh, I imagine his face looked a lot like my face did at the same moment. Uh, because I just realized, I mean, I'm holding my hand, the socket's still on this thing, it fell off, and I'm holding my hand in this file, I've got the file sticking in my hand. Uh, and my face is, I mean, my face is scrunched up with, with pain and discomfort. And I imagine that, that his face in the home that he's made within me look the same because those words coming out of my mouth uh, made him just as uncomfortable as having an inch of that file in my palm. And nobody, I mean, you know, I was alone. Nobody was around. Nobody heard me except him. But that's the rub, isn't it? He's always there. I mean, you go out in the woods, you think you, you can say whatever you want. You holler till, till the cows come home. You know, that's, no, he's here. He hears you. It's the, it's the same thing. Uh, I heard a preacher that was preaching once said that anything you do is like you've marched up to the throne of God and done it right in his face because that's how it is if you're, you're a believer. If you're a believer, Christ is within you. He's with you all the time. You're never alone. There's never not anybody watching. He was watching. And to have... Uh, to have to defile the home that he has within me with those words, uh, especially as a as a default, you know, what I mean, it didn't take any time. And I'm not I'm not bragging. I don't, I don't want you to think that I'm bragging about that. I'm not. Uh, I'm ashamed of that. Uh, but, but I mean, I want to be honest. I want to relate. I certainly don't want to come off holier than thou. But that I mean, there, there was not a, not a time delay. Uh, I mean, it actually took me a minute to get it under control to where the, the words that were coming out of my mouth were not uh, PG-13. And I imagine that, that, ha that having those words come from my mouth was like I walked into the room that he has within, my, within me and stabbed him with the chainsaw fire. That's how, how comfortable I think that I made him that day in the home that he has within me. And, you know, when there's sin in your life, uh, when there's sin in your life, you're making a home that he has within you very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. And I'll leave you with that today. Uh, I'll leave you with that thought. And I just want you to ponder that. You know, I'm not, I don't know you. I'm not judging you. I'm not anything like that. You know I mean? Uh, today we're talking about me, uh, my mistake, my sin. Uh, but I do want you to ask yourself that question. Uh, if you're a believer, if you're a believer, then Christ dwells within you. And if Christ dwells within you, how comfortable is the home that he has within you? Or better yet, I mean, I still think that's a better question. How comfortable do you allow him to be? Are you like my mother uh, that says, you know, hey, come, you know, make yourself at home? Uh, or are you more like, more like me? You know, hey, man, you can have a couch, but my bed's mine. Uh, 
something to think about. Something that I've definitely been thinking about since, since studying this lesson. Uh, anyway, I will leave you there. We'll pick up next week with verse 11 uh, and see how far that takes us. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for listening to this study. Uh, and please keep coming back. Uh, we'll, we'll keep going through this study until we get to the, the end of the book of Romans and then we'll find us another book to go through. Uh, thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for everything you've given us. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to to, to worship uh, and share uh, with each other this way, uh, using this technology today. We praise you for that, Father. Uh, we ask that things do come back to a point uh, where we can get back to... Uh, to worshiping you in some some type of normal fashion i don't know that that it'll ever be as the the way it was before and that that might be what you were going for uh that might be how you want us to improve things father uh we just want to get into the same room with uh believers again uh father uh and fellowship and worship your name lord we ask that you be uh, uh, with all the people that have prayer requests right now, Father. Uh, you know who they are. Uh, and if you can't grant them uh, what they're asking for, Father, we ask that you grant them peace. A peace that only comes from you. We thank you for your word, Father, and we ask that you continue to bless the study, Lord. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you. <laughs>